there's no rules when you're sharpening. And when, when I write the user's guides and I'm instructing someone how to use the product, it's really about the fastest, simplest way to get someone to a sharp edge. Mm -hmm. That's not always the only, only way to do it. Welcome back to the workshop. I'm Kyle. I'm Kyle also. <laughs> this week, we're taking a deep dive in the one you guys have been waiting for, the Precision Adjust. Let's take a look. So when it comes to getting the most out of the Precision Adjust, Kyle, where do you typically start when it comes to that? One of the things that's really important is being comfortable during the sharpening process. Ergonomics are really important. Just like when you're using a knife and cutting, you wanna be in a controlled but comfortable position. I've used the sharpener a lot, uh, I find that, that ergonomics can be very important to the sharpening process. Uh, I prefer to sit. Um, I feel like I'm closer to the sharpener. So in a bench top setup like this, I like sitting on a, a bar stool or shop stool. I get closer to the sharpener. Same here. I'm finding myself like right in there, just getting after it with this thing. So I like yeah. being close to it. Totally, I get that. Yeah. It's a really intimate experience with the edge. One of the things I've found is when I'm sharpening a knife, I really want to maintain a high level of control as I'm sharpening my way down the edge. Okay. Right. And when I do that, I found myself, I found myself doing this and I, and I didn't even realize it until someone else called it out. So I'm not going to use the sharpener straight at me, Kyle. I, I feel like I'm really tied in and my elbows are too tight. So I'm going to turn the sharpener about a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Steve kind of had it almost like at a 90 from him too. So yep. yeah. Everyone finds their sweet spot. So, you know, play around, uh, sharpen some knives and, and just try moving and find that comfortable spot. Sure. I like this 45 degree orientation when I start. So I got my angle set here at 20 degrees. I, I know that I've already established a 20 on this knife. And when I'm sharpening, what I find is instead of bringing the abrasive around to the tip, I can start to feel tension in my elbow and my shoulder, right? It starts to get tight. Yeah. So what I've learned is for me, it's more comfortable if I just index the sharpener oh, wow, around yeah. while I'm sharpening. That way I'm able to maintain the same strokes, the same pressure, and I've always got my eye on the edge as the blade is, is uh, as I'm sharpening my way down the cutting yeah. edge. And then when I switch to the other side, I'm gonna use the white markup, handle out to the right, flip the blade over, and then just do the opposite right as back I go, go right down. So I'll maintain that same angle. And then as soon as I hit the belly, just start indexing the sharpener around. <laughs> a lot more comfortable, a lot more consistent. Simple, easy little thing to do, but it makes a big difference, you can tell already. It does. Yeah. Another thing I've found is that flip over that we just showed, right? Works great on an EDC or a pocket knife. The blade length really accommodates well to that quick flip over when I'm sharpening. Yep. Longer blades, you got two choices, Kyle. You can remove the blade from the clamp and flip it over. Yep. But one thing I've noticed, and I'll use this longer blade here. In the instructions, we tell you to clamp on the center of the blade. But one thing I've learned is if I just come a little more forward on the blade and change that center line, mm -hmm. now I can take a longer blade and flip it over center without hitting the tip on the bench top. Yep. And it doesn't affect the outcome on your knife that much. I'm still able to get this knife incredibly sharp and I find I'm able to do it faster and more safely because I'm not handling the knife right. you know, out of the clamp. It's I always know where it is. It's safely positioned. There's plenty of room on the rod length to accommodate getting to that further distance but it gives me much better ergonomics to get through that sharpening process more quickly. One of the things that sets the precision adjust apart from a lot of the other sharpeners out there is the ability to put a custom edge on the knife. Show us a little bit about that uh, and what you've experienced with this so far. It's a lot of fun to customize your edge. There's, there's no rules when you're sharpening. When I write the user's guides and I'm instructing someone how to use the product, it's really about the fastest, simplest way to get someone to a sharp edge. Mm -hmm. That's not always the only, only way to do it. One of the things I've found to create incredibly keen edges incredibly quickly is to create a multifaceted edge. If I want to remove material from a knife down to a 15 degree edge, 
it's a lot of work. I, I brought this down. It was it, it was starting at about a 20, maybe a 22 degree edge. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a 15. So an hour and a half later, right? Yep. I've got a really crisp 15 <laughs> degree edge. But one thing I've noticed is if I want to get there faster, I can do it in two steps. So what I'll do is I'll do that first sharpening at uh, 15. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm knocking the shoulders off the edge. Kyle. Okay. I'm thinning further up. If I want to continue that 15 degree journey all the way down to the cutting edge. You're going to be there a while. I'm going to be there a while. Yeah. I'm a cutter. I'm a user, right? I want a, a highly functional sharp edge. So I go to 15 degrees, knock the shoulders off, spend some time sharpening there, but then I jump up to 20 degrees and now I can get right down to the cutting edge. Okay. So I got the thin slicing benefit of that 15 degree thinned edge, but I've got a little more material behind the cutting edge at 20 degrees. Okay. So I've got great edge retention, but I get incredibly clean slicing knife and I can cut the sharpening time in third. So it's similar to the convex edge that a belt would create, but you're doing it with this system as well. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that's one of the advanced techniques you can do with the precision adjust. Was there anything else that we're leaving out that you can get accomplished with this? So much more. Okay. So much more. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I can sharpen a knife for the application for how I'm using it for what I want my knife to do. Okay. I brought this one in for us today. This is my weekend warrior knife. I'm an automotive DIY guy. I'm often working on old cars, motorcycles, wires, hose, zip ties, greasy hands, right? Yep. And I want one knife for all those tasks. And what I've found is a high polish, incredibly keen edge is great for a lot of things. Other things, not at all. It doesn't cut a zip tie very well, for example. Yeah. Right? But a toothy edge will pop a zip tie in an instant. Yeah, I'm usually using a serrated for something like that. Exactly. And that's so. why they're there. Yep. Right? So what I've done on this knife is the heel section of the knife, I've, I sharpen on the 320 grit diamond and then just do a very quick deburring. So I'm leaving a toothy edge mm -hmm. back in this area. Yeah, I don't know if the camera can pick up on it, but you can see that there's little more uh, almost serration to it. You can see the, the, the lines in the knife versus at the, out at the end, it's a little more polished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks more like a when you get a, a factory ground yeah. knife. You see the striations in the edge. Coarse grind and just deburr it. That's where I'm doing my high pressure cutting. There's even a little bit of recurve belly in that knife. So I'm getting my high pressure cuts in there, yep. right? It bites really well. But from the belly, uh, into the belly of the knife, not towards the tip, that's where I want a much more keen edge for my fine cutting and slicing. So when I sharpen, what I'll do is I'll use the 320 grit along the entire length of the knife. But when I do the grit progression, I'm only going to use the 600 grit from there forward. Okay. So I'll do the whole thing in 320, and then I will use the 600 grit on the belly forward. Just on the end there. Yeah, because that's where I want that smoother, more refined yep. edge. Makes sense. Flip over, same on the other side. I'll just pick up right at the radius of that belly on the 600. And then I'll index to the ceramic and just do quick passes of the ceramic along the whole edge to get that burr off. Just get, literally just knocking the burr off. And then you've got, like you said, two different areas of your knife for two different tasks. You got it. So now I have a differentially sharpened edge. So I essentially get two knives in my pocket, does everything I want or need for the day. So I noticed when you were sh doing your sharpening on the Grizzly there, you were only going one direction as you came across the uh, the abrasive on the on the knife itself is there a reason behind that or I've found that if I'm coming away from the edge um, it increases my my control and my consistency if I want that highly refined edge I, I find it creates a more consistent surface finish and what I've learned about sharpening and, and working away from the edge you know I'm drawing that material that burr if you will out and away sure. from the cutting edge hmm. so I feel like I have you know better control more consistency. Um, and I'm getting insanely sharp edges. Okay. So, you know, for me, for what, what I'm wanting and expecting out of my knives, I find that, that that best fits my ergonomics, my edge preference, and the performance is 
unbelievable at the other end. It's interesting because Steve was the opposite. But like you said, as long as the result that you're getting is what you're looking for, that's all that matters at the end of the day, that you're getting the result for your knife and the experience that you want. Absolutely. Cool. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. And the way that you do it, that you're happy with, is the one that works. I've had a few people in the comments online mention using uh, water or lube with the precision adjust. Do you have any experience with that? I do. Uh, we don't require water or oil, uh, so you can certainly get uh, all your sharpening needs met dry. Okay. It's, it's certainly quick and easy. I would caution against using any oil or uh, you know, any honing oils or, or oil-based lubricants. They just make a sticky mess. Okay. Um, water, however, uh, I have played around with that and it does seem to affect the surface finish mm. created. So for those who are looking for sharpness you know, and a high polish, the water uh, specifically on the ceramic hone can bring the surface finish to the next level. So uh, if we could get some water on set. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> and it doesn't take much. So what I've uh, what I'll do here is clamp up clamp up this knife, and we've got a really nice uh, bevel face. I don't need much. I mean, you'll notice I'm just going to put you know, dip my finger, get a little bit onto the ceramic abrasive, and just drop a little bit onto okay. onto the edge. It doesn't need to be a, a lot of water or a big mess, but you'll you'll start to hear and feel that there's a little more lubricity and that the abrasive uh, feels like it glides across uh, the edge. So really getting you that polishing effect almost on the, on the blade versus, yeah, <laughs> you can hear it. And again, I like that draw stroke so that I'm staying in that single direction. And that little bit of water is just gonna carry on the stone and follow the, the sharpening as I get that ceramic across the cutting edge. So it doesn't need to be a big messy process, but a little dab of water can really help with your uh, level of edge surface finish refinement uh, as you're finishing up on the ceramic. Kyle, thanks again for coming on. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, it seems like the instruction booklet is just the start when it comes to the precision adjust. Absolutely just the baseline of getting started. A lot of ways to customize your sharpening for your knives, for the way you want them to perform. So get stoked and own your sharpening experience, guys. Precision Adjust is back in stock at your local retailer. Also, we're gonna give one away. If you leave a comment in the comments below, uh, we're gonna pick a lucky winner and we'll announce that the following Wednesday from today. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, guys. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. See you next time.